Hello everyone, today is Thursday, February 6, 2020, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to attend. I am humbled by your presence. All right, what are we talk about? Well, the current market conditions, new bull leg, that's been left over for several months, so I need to take that out. Obviously, we're in a bull leg. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them to the slides while we're in the slides. And when we get to the charts, the overall market, that is, the live charts, I should say, feel free to ask about anything you want. This week's lesson is going to be uh, some, some not so good trades, some pretty good trades, some mistakes, which didn't hurt me too bad, and a few other things. But all of that is pretty much along the lines of my ongoing quest or fits nicely into my ongoing quest and if i succeed i'm going to own the world and even if i just do okay i'll be doing quite well and that's basically having that short-term trading pay for the longer term trading and i'll show you some things that happen both good and bad there's a slam screen as you know you can lose money trading or as often summing up all predictions or about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then i borrowed that line or stole it from my buddy greg morris <laughs> I was doing a presentation once and somebody pointed something out and some system and uh, Greg le leaned over and said, a lot of shit can happen between now and then. Anyway, my ongoing quest is to have the short term paying pay for the long term trading and opening gap reversals and such like that, things like that. The thing about the opening gap reversals is if you do them properly, it's like money lying in the corner. You just walk over there and pick it up, like Jimmy Rogers says. But the problem is it's a big if, and there's a lot of shiny objects or shiny gaps that get you excited, and you really have to throttle yourself back and take the best and leave the rest, and that's the hard part. And I'm going to show you what actually happened this week. Now, Along the lines of having the short-term trading pay for the longer-term trading, I'm going to pose a question this week, is or are the ogres worth it? I think it made a pretty good case last week, but this week it's going to be a little bit different. You'll see in just one second when I'm, where I'm going with that. And then the ultimate goal is to have the swing trades pay for the mother of all trend trades. And I'm going to show you a few of those trades from last week or so and how they're shaking out now let's get back to these opening gap reversals are they worth it now to those who weren't familiar with the opening gap reversal let me just run you through it real quick you're looking for and ideally you would like to see a stock set up there are some other type of opening gap reversals that we're willing to go after and i get burnt on a couple of those this week and i'll show you those in just one second but ideally you want to be trading the opening gap reversal with the trend and when you come in and the market gaps lower and you're looking for that sort of the reversion to the mean move i hate to use that word because that's with me it has a bit of a negative connotation but it's what you're looking for the market is stretched down to the downside after an incredible run higher in other words it's set up okay it would be a setup in some cases that you would take in and of itself as a swing to intermediate term trade so in a case like this you got the gap lower and you're looking for that market to bounce back up now i hate to use the word day trade i think day trading in general is a negative thing and has a negative connotation but an intraday trade based on an opening gap is viable and i'm going to maybe make a case against that this week a little bit inadvertently now this is another one tal you can see it was in a really nice uptrend and then it just got sort of creamed overnight while it was pulling back and what happens is the opening gaps shake out a lot of people and if you think about like a market maker or somebody who has to buy that stock from you and this was especially true down when they still have floor traders on nyse but you still have market makers and what they'll do is they'll bring that stock low uh, to such a low level to where they can unload you can unload your shares on them and they need to unload those shares. So it's so low, they're able to flip them out at a higher level. 
and you can't get mad at these people. They have to feed their families too. And that's one of the things that happens with an opening gap reversal. Now, one thing that's in the back of my head, I haven't really fleshed out just yet, but on like a really, really, really thick stock, especially one that's trending nicely, that gap lower could be an opportunity for an institution to come in and buy shares, whether it's window dressing or something they've been trying to accumulate or whatever. And I don't want to confuse the issue with facts, but I'm wondering if on these really big cap stocks, when it's super, super liquid, and you had that disequilibrium in price, could that help to create more of a vacuum back up? Okay. And that's something that I think we're going to noodle with a little bit over time, especially in the Facebook group. So let's get back to the opening gap in this situation. You can see that it opened and it did sell off a little bit, but then it had a decent rally to the close. Now I left one in here for example purposes, and I could see a couple of you are asking me to explain them. So let's take a look at the example of that TAL, which is this one right here, where you had a really, really nice trend and then you had a big gap against the trend. And the theory is, okay, it's gonna have at least a nice little bounce intraday back in the direction of the trend. Now you don't just buy it on the open, but you wait to see if it establishes its range, and then you look to get long if it begins to rally. And a lot of times, in a case like this one, I actually use a stop entry order. Those are the actual orders, as I've been saying lately. I'm gonna slowly work towards more and more transparency, inspired by Dalio's book, Principles. Dalio's a billionaire, multi-billionaire, hedge fund manager, and he wrote a book called Principles. And that's one of his principles is radical transparency. And I'm going to do it until it begins to hurt or see if it does begin to hurt. And so far, it hasn't hurt my trading. It's actually made me a better trader, if anything, because anytime I go to do like a little S and G type of trade, in other words, a lottery ticket type of trade or, or something I shouldn't be doing, it makes me think twice about it. Anyway, so those are the actual trades as far as the transparency is concerned. I ended up putting a buy stop in here and it didn't quite get to the initial profit target. And by the time I sold out, it was right there, but I still was able to get some profits off the table. And then I let the automated trailing stop do its thing. And it did come fairly close to getting stopped out, but fortunately I was able to ride the trend for the whole day. So this is a day trade, but the reality is I really didn't do much of anything other than I put in a buy order and then I ended up not quite getting my initial profit target. So I ended up putting in a sell order. And that was all within like 20 or 30 minutes. I'm only on the screen ideally because usually I'm pretty hungry by nine o'clock central, about a half an hour after the open. I want to be off the screen within 30 minutes. And then I could go off and do a webinar or do my slides. And there's there's some other things that I'm working on and tons and tons of projects. And sometimes I even like to leave the house, hop on my bike, and maybe get a little bike ride in or go to the gym and get some exercise, which I think is vitally important. And that's one reason I talk a lot about the holistic traders taking care of yourself. Very important to do that. I probably should take better care of myself. So do as I say, not as I do there. But anyway, that was a little day trade, pick up eh, five, 600 bucks, better than the poking out. Now, getting back to the, our org is worth it. Well, this week they were not worth it, okay? Now, these weren't necessarily perfect little trades, except the Facebook one sort of was, and that's that big cap thing that I thought was going to work. And you could see on that one, I got a little aggressive and I bought a couple of calls in addition to the shares. And by the way, what I'm showing you here is what I have close to the model account. And by the model accounts, I'm talking right around 100K where I'm taking trades that are direct from the service, either the Landry list or actual recommendations. And I'll show you a couple of both, a couple of those in just one second, or something like an opening gap reversal or an IPO trade, which is outside of the core methodology. And I guess IPOs are slowly becoming part of the core methodology because we're obviously trading them. But anyway, you can see if you went back seven days or so, the opening gap reversal trading certainly was not worth it with a loss of $1,190. Now, 
Now that's on a around a 100k account. So that's a 1.2% loss. That's a substantial loss to just and that's something that just goes away. It's not like that stock's going to come back tomorrow and erase all that. And so I always say don't play the annualized game, but I think on the downside you probably need to wake yourself up and say, well, wait a minute, if I lost that much every day, that's $300,000 a year. Well, obviously you'd blow up this account before the year was over if you lost that much every day. But anyway, I wanna show you a case where it just flat out didn't work. Now, getting back to the short-term attempts at longer-term trades, this is one we talked about in the Facebook group. And the reason I'm showing you these, either the service recommendations or the Facebook group or whatever, is to show you that anything I discuss here, and ideally everything, but I, I'm working towards that, again, the radical transparency type of thing, and also show you ahead of time what I'm doing, not like pump and dump like some of these scumbags out there, or cherry pick or have multiple accounts and, and do one thing in one and one thing in another and act like you're really smart. But instead say, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and then show you that I actually did it. And you can see that this was the buy it D set up and we kind of chewed on it a little bit. And then we talked about our trades there and that was directly from the Facebook group. By the way, if you are a gold member of DaveLander.com, make sure you join the Facebook I will group. I will approve you right away. And if I don't, shoot me an email and say, what the hell, Dave? <laughs> and you have to be a gold member. The group is free, but you have to be a gold member. And that's just to keep the riffraff out. And so we don't have somebody come in who ask a whole bunch of questions, don't know what they're doing. Nothing wrong with asking questions, but at least we can refer you to presentations where you can get a really well thought answer. Anyway, so this was our buy at B setup and SITM. And then we hit the initial profit target. And here's the actual trades, 800 shares, and then flipped out. 200 and that was actually a mistake so i want to show you that it's not just print money print money print money sometimes you make mistakes and for some reason i flipped out 400 shares i think what happens and i actually said this i said smoke them if you got them i think in the facebook group or something and for some reason i thought i had overbought this particular stock and so i ended up flipping out 400 and then I actually made a mistake again when it came time to take profits in other accounts. I just assumed that I need to take profits in this account and I noticed I had 400 shares, so I immediately sold 200 shares. So that was another mistake and that leaves me with 200 shares. I should actually have 400 shares left. So this trading, I ended up with $564 and then $1,000 based on that move there. So I banked $1,564, and then there was, based on a 27.33 close, there's $1,368 open. And this is what it should have been had I followed everything as I was supposed to. It should have been $1,000 banked versus $1,564. So I actually banked a little too much. And then it would, you'd have $27. 36 open based on the closing price of 2733, which gives you a total profit of $3,736 on this trade versus 2932. So you can see doing a little better by following the system in this particular case and not scaling out and making those mistakes on too many shares. Now, with today's action, because it's up another couple of points. By the way, the earnings came out overnight, and that's where I initially wanted to talk, what I initially want to talk about before you knew it, I was going through all the trades, and, and that's why I'm reporting the trades here and showing you what I did and showing you mistakes. But the earnings came out overnight. The question is, hey, Dave, you hold through earnings? I ignore all news. Hey, Dave, what about the coronavirus? I ignore all news. Well, I did get sucked into a little coronavirus stuff, but. Anyway, I didn't know it. I didn't know it ahead of time. No, I bought a stock, and turns out they're working on a cure for the coronavirus, or an antidote, or a vaccine. I guess would be the proper way of calling it. But the point I want to make is that you do have to take the good with the bad. And knock on wood, 
this trade turned out pretty good because it's now it's up another couple of points intraday. And of course, I'd be making a lot more in that one account had I kept the trade on. Now, I'll just show you that I did sort of practice what I preach or exactly practice what I preach. There's your 800 share buy down here. And there's the 400 shares being flipped out in the $24 range. So on this particular trade, sold at 24.08. And then at 27.30, you have open profits of 27.32. Now let's take a look at another one. And in this particular case, the buy was at 16.25 for 471 shares. I rounded up using a bit of a round number, 600 shares. This, this account's a little bit bigger than 100K. Plus I like to use a round number. It's like, okay, well, if I've got 600 shares, I could flip out 300. That's an easy round number to work with. And this is what happened. First of all, you had a nice, nice, nice accelerated uptrend in a very nice pullback. So we had to buy at this level here, stop down here. So what do we do? It's just going up and down and up and down and up and down. Nothing, we don't do anything, okay? We sit tight and let the chips fall where they may. If we get stopped out on this one, so what? I know, haha, so what? But we follow the system. And if I saw the same setup tomorrow, given the persistency, meaning that it tends to go up day after day after day, given the acceleration, meaning that it's not only trending higher, but accelerating higher in its trend, given the pull, given the pullback, that a nice, fairly deep pullback, enough to knock some people out, okay? Enough to attract some possible shorts, and given the fact that it began to rally out of the pullback and triggered a buy signal. So, so far, so good. They don't always work this way. Remember AUI, we talked about that one. That one took months and months and months and months and months, and it finally hit the profit target. And by the way, we'll spend a little time looking at the open portfolio. So what do you do? You don't do anything. You just let the chips fall where they may. Now, this is one I discussed. I think I discussed this in my stock charts show. So this was a buy at B type of setup. And again, if you are taking 2% risk on a trade, that's if stopped out, we're looking for a 1% total gain. So again, on let's say 100K, that's right around $1,000. By the time I got out in this particular one, it was 990. And then once you take those initial profits, all you need to do is relax. And I know, haha. -ha. Of course, the market got creamed. And now keep in mind, we already banked 990, but then you ended up peak to trough with a loss of 1315. Now this required a tiny bit of discretion. Now we're not throwing caution to the wind, but you come in and the futures are getting creamed overnight. S&P futures down 50 points. You know your entire portfolio is gonna get whacked. You just gotta come in and decide on what you're gonna keep and what you're gonna bail out of because your stop was hit. In this particular case, dipped a little bit below where my stop was. And by the way, you don't carry the stops overnight, okay? I need to work on a frequently asked question page. Anyway, I applied a little bit of discretion there, and then it took back off again. And you can see we had a pretty big swing there. Now, the 990 is banked, but then you did have an open loss of 1350, peak to trough, of course and then back up, peak to trough of a $1,600 swing right back up. By the way, the swings have been a little bit extreme lately. I, I will not sugarcoat that, okay? All right, let's talk about QTT. QTT kind of had this longer term bottoming pattern. I'm not a fan of something like three drives to a low, but you could certainly say, well, this was three drives to a low, or, or in this particular case, four drives to a low. And I guess the reason I'm not a, Huge fan of three drives to a low is because sometimes it's four or five or six drives to a low. But in general, you could see that it began to decelerate in its decline over a period of period of months. And this is months. And this is what I call a Phoenix strategy. Something from very high levels falls from grace and then begins to rise from the ashes. And if you zoom in a little closer, you can see it was a cup and handle, which is 
a I don't want to say one of my favorite patterns, but it's a pattern I like, especially in these Phoenix type of stocks. And the beauty of like the cup and handle is my patterns, my setups set up within the cup and handle. And William O'Neill was popularized for cup and handle, but if you go back and look at Schaubacher and books written about 100 years ago, you can see they talk a lot about things like cup bottoms and things like that. So I'll give credit to William O'Neill, but the bottom line is there's nothing new under the sun. I, I thought I was a genius because I said the bigger the base, the bigger the launch into space. And then I was reading Linda Rasky's book and she said that Ralph Akampora is the one who originally said that. So nothing new in the sun when it comes to trading. I'm not going to say I've got the greatest and hottest thing out there like some of these idiots. Anyway, you zoom in a little bit. It's kind of a sloppy bow tie. I mean, it looks okay as a bow tie. Technically, it's a bow tie to the upside. Sloppy in that it took a few days to form. But for all intents and purposes, bow tie also first thrust. And then if you zoom it way in, it's just a generic pullback, okay? Now, here's the trade, and this is kind of an S&G type of trade right here. I just wanted to see, just for fun, okay, it's only 10 calls, and it's only $5 each, so 50 bucks. But I just wanted to see, this was after it triggered, I want to see if it'd be possible to pick up some wild ass crazy out of the money options. And initially thought about doing a hundred. It's like, no, don't be stupid, Dave. Just just see if they're they're available. And they were, and, and they're still all over, they still are lit, available <laughs> at five dollars each. So that's kind of just kind of like an S and G type of trade. It's only 50 bucks. I could sweep that under the rug. I know you don't want to do that every day. It's twelve thousand five hundred dollars a year. So I hear you. But the actual trade was to buy 2000 at 450 that was my trigger on that one and then what i also decided to do just because i'm kind of bullish on this longer term and i think that it has the potential to make a fast move was i ended up buying 18 february 21 so well why such an odd number well i was trying to buy 20 and i only got a fill on 18 it began to kind of get away from me from there i wasn't going to chase it any further my thinking was this would give me some, and this is not something I could directly teach, I suppose, but I figured that I can get in relatively cheap, and I know that the options people are probably rolling their eyes, deep, those options work cheap. But looking at the price chart, the fact that we have a possible major bottom in place, the fact that we have a potential fast move in place, and I don't want to confuse the issue with facts, but it is a Chinese company, and what's going on in China right now? Well, the coronavirus, it's a horrible thing. It's a lot more horrible than the Chinese have reported. But I think like Pinocchio being a bad motivational speaker, everybody knows that, okay? So I'm just kind of thinking that maybe it's a little bit overdone and that the China will survive and this company will rally nicely out of the technical pattern. So first and foremost, it was a technical pattern, but the fact that it was Chinese got me thinking that, well, that's even better because these Chinese stocks are probably beat up a little bit. And in a case like this, you know, what's the analogy? It's like pushing a, a beach ball into water. But you can see we had a buy right here at 450. And then I ended up flipping out a thousand shares this morning. I did an experiment on this one. I try not to experiment too much, but I like to kind of mess around a little here and there. And what I did was instead of just trying to get that profit target squeezed out, I put in trailing stops intraday. And sometimes that could work really well. And sometimes you have to be willing, willing to give up a little profit on there. So I did bail out a little bit early because initially I was thinking, give this thing about a full point, but I was able to sell eight of those options for more than a double. Now, anytime I get into, I guess all option positions are speculative, but anytime I get into a speculative option position, especially on something speculative like this, I nearly immediately put in an order to sell at a double. And this morning they were bidding 60. I've been trying to get filled for days at 60. And this morning they were bidding 60. I'm like, hey, don't look uh, gift horse in the mouth. And it's like, you know what? Let me bump that a little bit because the ask was like 75 or something. Let me just see if I can get 65 cents for those options. And eight options at a, at a price of 65 minus 30, that's another roughly 300 bucks there, or 208 bucks. 
on the trade. So I ended up still booking about a thousand dollars, which I wanted to book on the trade on 940, close enough for government work. Now I still have a thousand shares left and I still have 10 in the money options or options that are now in the money, I should say. And I still have those 10 SNG options. Did nervous Nancy close a sharp position on that too? <laughs> I don't know. He's referring to, I put a picture of Nancy Pelosi up, tearing up a chart of Tesla. The joke was that she was she was short and covered overnight. You're welcome, Stuart. Your stop is very far away. My stop on what is very far away? A one point stop on, well, that's what the stock called for. We'll We'll pick it apart when we get to the live charts. Now, as I've been preaching, the dangers of day trading or it could be a slippery slope or even the intraday trading. And as I said last week, the ACMRs and TALs, which were two beautiful trades, they don't come along every day. But if you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, as I often say, it is the closest thing to the money lying in the corner, Jimmy Rogers trade. Now, ideally, you don't want to be watching the screen all day. And I know I've been preaching this a lot. And I try not, and that's one thing I wrote in my morning pages this morning is that I need some more time. I need to make some time. How do I make time? It's like, well, I need to be more cognizant of how much I'm watching the screen. And fortunately, with these ogres, I do work hard, like I said, to get off my screen within the first 30 minutes of trading. And I'm done for the day, except at the end of the day, I'm looking at some buy at B type of IPO trades and then possibly closing out any open and gap reversals that were set up during the day. But I do try to use that automated trailing stop and that limit order to create a bit of a set it and forget it type of environment like the rotisserie 2000 chicken cooker. And like I said last week, ideally I want that IPT, of course we all want the IPT to get hit as fast as possible. And that way I'm not as tempted to look at that screen and that automated trailing stop on the remaining shares, good, bad, or indifferent will take me out or either keep me in for the entire day, like on the Tau and the ACMR trades. Those are two really textbook type of trades. Stewart says, as a pullback experience over say three, four, five days, do you continue to lower the buy price as it drops? Yes. Stuart, you're I know you're a little new to the educational uh, side of the website, but that should be covered under methodology. And if it's not, remind me and I'll point that out in the Next Q&A when we have it. Okay, a couple of random thoughts here. Be super duper careful with the ogres. I've had a few of you guys call me up and talk about it. And you, you and I agree with you too. And that's why I actually said it can be a slippery slope and we're basically going back and forth. And, and that's one of the pitfalls that I did worry a little bit about with the Facebook group is if one of us, or more of us, or if I get too active showing these opening gap reversals, and all of a sudden everybody starts jumping at everything. And I have seen a little bit of that happen, okay, where some of you guys are going after some of these mediocre opening gap reversals. And as I see it, I try to tap the brakes on you a little bit. But I know you get excited and, and you've got bills and you want to make some money and uh, you feel like everything's happening without you you had that FOMO going on but yeah be careful with them and just try to wait and wait and wait and if I really really wait for something that looks fantastic I really do fantastic and I just turned on a little feature with Thinkorswim where it shows me all the trades on a chart and if I pull up like a TMV or TMF chart or, or even Soxess especially Soxess I should say I could see all the trades that worked and all the ones that didn't and the ones that worked, it was like, man, that was really a beautiful looking opening gap reversal. And in something like the TMV or TMF, it's like I'm even more selective there, maybe because it's an efficient market or maybe it just doesn't set up that often because it's a little bit less volatile. But I seem to do, knock on wood, I seem to do especially well with bonds for some reason, which I haven't really fleshed out. I spent I did spend 14 years in a bond fund, but uh, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Anyway, I digress. 
Now, getting back to the trend following, and that's why I wanted to leave that example in from last week. And just kind of shaking my mouse over there on my trading screen just to see where I am. And the reason I did that is because I've been in a little bit of a drawdown lately. And it's like, you're in a drawdown, you're in a drawdown, you're losing money, you're losing money. You're spending a lot of your time as a trend follower being less wealthy. And it can wear on you. And I've been really cognizant of my emotions lately, as has my wife. But then you have a day like today where you sort of come flying out of that drawdown. I don't know, day ain't over yet, right? But knock on wood, so far, so good. But there is a danger, a spiral, as I say, as I've said, ad nauseum. The danger is that a negative emotion has twice the impact as a positive one, okay? And they've actually studied this by measuring dopamine. And as I said before, some people say at least two and a half, and one of you guys said it's 10 times. So I think somewhere between two and 10 is, is, is the negative emotion. And let's face it, you do spend most of your time, especially as a trend follower, less wealthy. So you could end up in that downward spiral. So you have to be really, really cognizant of that. Now, as I've been preaching quite a bit, follow the process, follow the process, and follow the process. Don't micromanage yourself out of the trade when it starts going sideways. Yes, it's painful over the short term. Yes, you will second guess it over the short term, but I can guarantee you the pain of that is going to be a lot less than if you micromanage yourself out of a trade and then it turns into the elusive and finally mother of all winners. And I'm just kind of think, looking back at this. I didn't even think about it, but I'm looking back at the slides I'm doing here. I'm looking at the open portfolio and it's like one little position is up $3,000. Well, that's 3% over the entire portfolio. And that's that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a pretty good little run, especially when you've already taken off $1,000 of profit. So now it's like a 4% run in that one position. So following the plan, following the process, following the process, not micromanaging, let the chips fall where they may, you get stopped out, so what? Drop an F-bomb, move on, and scream next. Or as I often say, pretend you're Paul Giamatti from, <laughs> was that movie John Adams? I said good day, sir. All right, lots of questions coming in. <laughs> Tell them if they sign up, they'll see Nancy Pelosi's trading memes. That'll get them. I used to call a meme a may may, and it drove my children nuts, and so I continue to call them that. They think that I still think it's called a may may. I think it makes more sense to have it uh, called a may may on an opening day by day basis. Well, if if you're if you have an entry and a stock drops on the open, I don't lower the entry. I think that's what you're asking. But if the if the stock continues to drop, then what I do is I will lower the entry on it. In fact, we have time for that. We actually have a few questions coming in. And again, let me know if you find this on the on the back end of the website. But it should be there. And that's one thing that I woke up thinking about today is I really need to archive this stuff. And, and I'm going to start working on a fag page. And there's so many things I want to do. It's just so little time. So, yeah, if you've got a stock that begins to pull back, and let's say we decide the entry is going to be here, and then next day it comes in, it pulls down, then the entry might be here, and then it pulls back a little bit more. And let's say this is a really good serious trend we've got a big blue arrow a cyan arrow pointing higher then yeah you would lower that stop once again and you want it to be enough wiggle room just in case it rallies and it comes right back in you don't get triggered but far enough away to where if it does get triggered then it's a bona fide potential reversion to the mean move back in the direction of the trend in other words rally on a pullback the trade-off is always the higher your entry the more confirmation, but the problem with that is sometimes a stock might just get to that entry or barely to that high entry and then come back in. That might be all the reversion to the mean move you get, okay? How do you plan an entry on an opening gap reversal? Well, that depends, but what I do is a couple things. One, I look at like a daily chart. Okay, let's say we're, let's keep it simple this week and not get into what I borrowed from Linda Rasky is the, <laughs> Mike, you're making me laugh. I, I can't read it. I got to look away. It's the, 
a burning dog trade. So let's just focus on the opening gap reversals for something like a trend trade. Okay, so we've got the big blue arrow pointing higher and you've got a gap lower. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to have a daily chart up top. Okay, so my screen will look like this. And then I have the intraday chart down here. So one thing I look at is, of course, look at the intraday chart. The ideal situation is when they open, and this, let's say this is a five minute chart down here, and maybe they have a little fake out within the first or second bar or whatever, and then begin to implode a little bit, then I know that, okay, I can get in right here, okay? Now, before that all happens, I'll look at the daily chart and say, okay, if this thing reverses to, let's say, this level here, then maybe it's worth trading. I've got one open order now for, I don't even know the stock. I have to go see. Okay, CDAY, and when we get the live charts, I'll show you that one. And that's sort of at a level where if it hits it, then it's a pretty good reversal on the daily chart. And the reason I'm thinking on daily chart is like, okay, where would it rally to on the daily chart? It's kind of like the same thing with the entries on the, on the when we're trade, taking a longer term trade, like how far away does it need to be for confirmation, but not too far away till we miss that reversion to the mean trade. So if I'm looking at a daily chart and say, okay, whatever this level here, if it could rally all the way to here, then we might have a bona fide reversal on our hands. Now, again, sometimes you get lucky, stock implodes a little bit. So then you say, okay, well, I'm going to put my entry here or lower this entry down a little bit, okay, because of the intraday action. Now, by the way, we spent a lot of time talking about ogres. This is just one part of trading, but it's a lot more complicated than my core methodology. And that's why we spend so much time on it. And by the way, uh, Susie, what you could do is if you go in and watch the Q&As, we beat ogres to death in the Q&As. So go to members area, go to courses, and then the Q&A is set up sort of like a course where you can mark complete. But we really beat the, the ogres to death there. So I would, I would suggest you go in and take that Q&A course, so to speak, and a lot of questions will be answered there. So anyway, that's one way of doing it. The problem is, let's say a stock gaps lower and then starts rallying, rallying, what do you do? Well, that's when you have to really look at that daily chart and figure out where would it be on the daily chart that would suggest that it's reversing. And hopefully, I know I just had hope, but hopefully would, we'll be able to follow through from that, okay? So again, look at the daily chart, where would the reversal be? And then look at the intraday chart, if it does this, then obviously, makes it to here, that would be a buy. And then if it triggers, this would be your stop, okay? And a lot of times I'll just say, okay, what's this distance? This is, a, let's say one point. So I'll put in a one point automated trailing stop, okay? And then I'll put in a one point profit target at a limit, okay? So my screen will look like this. And so I have this bracket up here and down here. And hopefully, and I know you said hope again, but hopefully it hits this level before it hits this level. This level, I drop some F-bombs, and then I scream next. This level, I go to eat breakfast or go to the gym and let the automated trailing stop take me out, okay? Yeah, you're welcome. I think once you go through the Q&A, it's going to make a heck of a lot of sense. Now, your stops have to be... Now, by the way, with these open gap reversal trades... Do as I say, not as I do, but ideally you really don't want to risk more than a half a percent of your account if stopped out. Bad things can still happen. My, my people say, you don't sound like a coon ass. It's like every now and then I do. It's like, especially when I say words like bad. Bad things can still happen, Sha. <laughs> With us, even though you know, you're just doing a little intraday trade. So a half a percent is plenty. You get whacked on a few of these. I mean, look at what I did last week. Okay. That's that's what I forget the exact number, 1100 bucks. I sure wish I had 1100 bucks in my in my pocket, especially when I walk in the house and my wife's like, hey, let's go on vacation. Or, hey, you know, we need $7,000 for tuition. So, okay, well, I just pissed away $1,000. And, and believe me, obviously that hurts. Anyway, okay. Will your fact page include your thoughts on how Home Depot looks? <laughs> Someone who he's not here today because he's not a member of the gold section, but I guess if he's ever watching, I guess if he watches the weekend charts, he'll know. Well, wait a minute, this is weekend charts, so he might be here. 
Yeah, someone who should be a trend trader asked about Home Depot, which was all over the place at the time, and I kicked him out of the group. <laughs> Still one of our favorite moments when you lost your mind, the guy who asked about going along HD despite terrible price action. Yeah, don't be nervous about asking about a stock that's not trending once, okay? I will not beat you up. If I, if I see you in a group as a new person and you ask about some wide and loose crazy stock, I will not beat you up. But if after multiple weeks you keep asking about crappy stocks, then I might have to beat you up a little bit. Somebody a while back emailed me. I'm not coming to any more you weekend charts because you never like any of my stocks. It's kind of like, remember, what was it, liar, liar? You know, it's like Joe's on the phone. He knocked over another ATM. He wants to know what to do. <laughs> Jim Car Carrey's character is like, stop breaking the law. And so I was like, Telling this guy, well, start bringing me better stocks, okay? <laughs> Get educated. It's not that hard. Learn how to draw some arrows. All right. Let's go ahead and move to the live charts. There's a couple things you guys want to talk about that. Let's get my screen shared here. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll I'll take a look at an opening gap reversal that I have a working order in right now for. And let's let me show you. Maybe that'll help flesh it out. A little bit and again you know go through the members area and, and i've spent as i've said before i know you guys really don't care it's kind of like one of those old people talk about the ailments but my hands are killing me now even the one i had i had elbow surgery got a scar about four inches or so five inches whatever and to move a nerve and that hand's still killing me my other hand's killing me and it's like there's just not enough time in the day to go in and answer every single question on a one by one basis. And even when I did that, even though I'm still a little guilty of doing it now, but even when I did that, people still weren't getting it. So I was incredibly inefficient. And that's why I put together this whole learning management system and then Facebook group so everybody can learn. And it's like if simple questions come up that we've covered a thousand times, People in the group can chime in, or I can come in and just say, go in and watch the money management module, go in and watch the Q&A. And eventually, just in case I get hit by a beer truck, okay, or one day I come in and get pissed off and say, I'm done. <laughs> Both of which could happen, by the way. Then at least the information is out there, okay? You can get aftermarket exhaust for $1,100. I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about like a fart can for your car? One of those little <laughs> fart cans? Stay focused, Zach. Stay focused. We're talking about trading. All right. What are we What are we looking at? Now you made me screw up. All right. C-Day. Okay. So here's what I'm looking at on this particular one. And immediately I thought, this thing gaps open. And let's see where this is. Why are you talking about motorcycles, Zach? Take your, take, take the whole Adderall this time. Don't break it in half. Go ahead and take the whole Adderall. Focus. <laughs> So I think I put in orders. Let me check my orders real quick. Yeah, I have an order at 68.01. The 01 is just because where I put my cursor, where I placed the order. So I figured getting back to the question that Susie was asking, at 68.01, this looks like a pretty good bona fide reversal, okay? Now, looking at this stock, you could see that it's been in one hell of a run, and then it has, in more recent times, begun to accelerate higher and implodes today, okay? So my thinking is this one has a chance to, pound, to bounce back in the direction of the trend. If that happens, then shorts will begin to cover and bottom fissures might get sucked in. And when all that happens, I'm going to, as Linda Rasky says, and I see that somebody else has stolen a line from her, but maybe it's just because there's nothing new in the sun, but I'm pretty sure Linda said it first. Feed the ducks while they are quacking. In other words, use that to your advantage. So that's my thinking on this one, $68. Let's take a look at, and by the way, you don't need a big position with something like this, okay? So at $68, somewhere, it didn't transfer over, right? Somewhere right around here, okay? Now there's always a trade-off, okay, in trading, obviously. So, I mean, technically, you could say, well, opening gap reversal, this first bar implodes, let's get in right at the top of this bar, and you'd already been triggered in. Good, bad, or indifferent. I don't know. 
But instead, it's like, well, first thing I'm going to do is if it gets all the way to 68, then it's a bona fide reversal. Then I want to watch the intraday action. And now we have this as a possible as the high for the day. So maybe you could be a little bit more aggressive now since it's open and move your entry to here. Okay. And then let's see what that low would be. So the low would be 63.61. Let's say just give it some wiggle room. Let's just say 63. And then what's the high? 66.57 gives us some wiggle room. So 66.75. And then the stop would be 66. Let's just go 66 even. 66.75 minus 66 equals 63. This is a lot harder to do on the fly than it is. Yeah, it's like, it's almost four points risk. So quite a bit of risk. So you wouldn't want that many shares. So I hope that showing you what I'm doing on a live trade, I hope that helps. And again, you know, ask questions, come to the Q and A's, ask questions ahead of time, ask questions in Facebook. We have a really good group. I mean, it's 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 beyond my wildest dreams. It really is. <laughs> Dave, your dreams have changed. I had a birthday party for my soon-to-be two-year-old daughter when I was engaged to my wife, and one of my friends came over. He's, he's a little dopey, and we were playing, what's that game, musical chairs or something? And he's like, Dave, your parties have changed. <laughs> All right, let's open it up for individual stock questions. And what I'm going to do while we're waiting on questions, yeah, keep them coming is I want to take a quick look at the open portfolio, show you what we've been up to. And then I want to take a look at the market, obviously. And then of course, drill down to your individual stock setups, your stock picks. So if you have any picks you want me to take a look at, be happy to do so now. Ideally, it want, you want the stock to be trending. If you've been to more than one of these shows and it's not trending, I have to kick you out. Almost choked on that, I guess God's punished me. All right, AUY. I remember when we got back and we got in this one about a month into it, I said, let's hope this turns into the mother of all dead money reports. One month, two month, three month, four, five months, going to the sixth month in this trade. It took almost five or six months before this thing actually hit the initial profit target. Can't guarantee they always would. Will, if I could guarantee that they always would hit the initial profit target, you would never see my fat ass again. So, so far, so good on that. When partial profits were taken on this little spike higher, and now we're free rolling, so to speak, and we now have a longer term position trade in the works. We just talked about CUE, and it's now back in black a little bit. Nothing to write home about, but an okay day there. You can see it had a nice thrust higher. We just talked about this one, remember, followed by a pullback. So far, so good. BRBR. Now, this one's kind of been all over the place. Trigger was back here, ran up a little bit, came in, and now it's trying to run up a little bit. It's a brand new issue, or an IPO, I should say. So it's not too far from all-time highs, and as you know, huge fan of all-time high. I don't know if Don is here to give us bad picks, but I will kick him out if he does. How's that? He's pretty good at getting back in, though. He's sneaky. <laughs> it's like the old joke, huh? I often say that when Don's around, the hunter that... Gets tapped on the shoulder by the bear, and the bear has his way with him. Eventually, the bear says, you're not here out here for the hunting, are you? PLMR, coming back in a little bit. This one has been crazy. It's amazing. I only have a few hundred shares of this thing in several portfolios. But boy, I tell you, it's it's been really pushing that equity curve around quite a bit. Down a little today, had a really nice spike a couple days ago. But now it's back to just kind of messing around in here. But not too far from all-time high, so let's give it the benefit of the doubt. And what should we do? Well, nothing. Just let the stop take us out. PGNY was sort of off to the races, came back in, trying to rally a little bit in here. Just on your stops, just in case another one of these pullback type of situations. Ping, yet another pullback, okay? And losing a little steam today. KOD, the mother of all trades so far this year, and last year I should say too. I guess not so much this year, but last year. If we triggered into this one here, when I say we, usually I mean that's a stock that was officially an official setup on the trading service and obviously took off. Now, somebody was asking me, do you ever sell a third out? The answer is a general statement is no, sell half at the initial profit target and let the trailing stop take you out of the other half. But in a case like this, yes, sell down to the sleeping level. You bought a stock at 20 something dollars, almost 30 bucks the next day at $75. Feel free to sell a little bit extra so you can sleep at night, okay? 
TSEO, one of these leftover shorts in here, kind of all over the, all over the place, shorter term. And this is a little bit unusual, especially in a bull market like we've been in. Usually you get in short, you make a little money, and then you get stopped out the remainder. It's almost better on the short side to just go ahead and take those partial profits and then let that be the whole trade or just take full profits. But I do like to follow the methodology just in case we catch the mother of all tops in something. You can see TSCO still looks like a major top's in place. PAGS is another one, still looks like a major top is in place here. And this is another one of those. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, this would trigger back here. And I guarantee you, most people got out after the first week or two when this thing was just not imploding. And they probably had very good, valid reasons to get out. But as I preach, micromanaging will pay over the short term, but never longer term. All right, good. Stuart, at least I reached one person today. Fantastic. Good job, Stuart. All right, GDXJ looks like a possible cup and handle. I'm actually a bigger fan of cup and handles at low levels. I know at one point in time during the bull market, I talked about a running cup and handle, and I guess this is sort of a running cup and handle. It's a little wide and loose, but by a running cup and handle, what I mean is this, you have an uptrend and then you have a big fat cup and handle within that uptrend. So let's take a look at that. So GDXJ, we have a pretty serious uptrend here. And then you have this, what Susie was pointing out as a cup and handle. And I see it, I would just much rather it be at low, low levels. Okay, kind of like that QTT to where you have just this unlimited, incredible upside potential. I see what you're saying. I wouldn't trade this pattern. You've got too many days of the pullback here. Doesn't mean that I wouldn't trade a gold stock if it set, sets up again. There was one on the Landry list just recently that was trying to set up. I forget the name of it. So getting back like to the cup and handle thing, I'd much rather something that looks like the QTT, okay? Because in case like this, as a Phoenix strategy type of thing, it's like, okay, well, we've got the we've got the cup and handle down here. We've got the cup and handle down here. And it's sort of textbook in nature. Let me try to draw that a little better. Well, maybe I can't. Okay, cup and handle here. And then entry was here. And so far, we're coming out of this. So my thinking is this thing comes flying out of this cup and handle. You've got the mother of all bases here, or not the daughter of all, not the mother of all. It's still a pretty big base. Maybe just maybe this thing can go back up to the teens, okay? So that's my thinking on that. Let's take a look at the overall market. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. It's not setting the world on fire today, but boy, I tell you, this thing has just been amazing in here. We are up here at all-time highs. If we close today at all-time highs, I mean, I'm sorry, if we close where we are now, it'd be all-time highs, obviously. Now, let me show you something real quick. Earlier, I mentioned the burning dog. And this goes a little bit of it, this goes against what I preach, but sometimes you get a market that's like really, 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 really overbought. And then you've got a gap up here and that's the exhaustion. And it comes right back in intraday, okay? Sort of like it did on this day here, unfortunately, it wasn't enough gap higher. But if we come in tomorrow and this thing gaps way up here, then it might, might be the key word in that sentence, it might be worth a shot for an opening gap reversal. And again, you're fighting the trend when you're trading these burning dog type of trades. Linda Rasky calls them burning dogs. She had a guy in her office for a while and he would fade every opening gap. And he, uh, it's like, you don't pet the burning dog. And if you get burned a few of these, then you realize that why they call burning dogs. But so far so good in the S&P 500. The NASDAQ, look at that, up a half a percent so far, or actually three quarters of a percent so far today, okay? We close here, we close at all time highs. Same sort of rules apply though. We could get that big opening gap reversal. Don't trade these unless you are very skilled at what you're doing. What you wanna do first with these opening gap reversals is trade them in the direction of the trend. Like we had that big gap lower the other day. And this is where I actually made a little bit of money. I don't think I got rich, but we had that big gap lower, like right here, okay? So you've got this massive, 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 massive trend. You have the mother of all knockout moves on the open, and then sometimes you get that vacuum right back up. And I think that I played Soxess and did okay on that particular day on that one. So that's the NASDAQ composite. So far, so good there. 
let's take a look at the rusty the rusty is finally beginning to bring up the rear a little bit today notwithstanding i was concerned because we pulled all the way back to this wide and loose space that i've been complaining about or had been complaining about forever i mean this is a tiny bit of an opening gap reversal because it's stalling short of the prior highs in here i mean if we did gap to all-time highs then i would have thought about shorting it so a little bit concerned about the rusty not the end of the world though not too far from these multi-month highs I sure would like to see all-time highs here. I sure would like to see that confirmation. As you go through the sectors, it could be a mixed bag here and there. For the most part, though, most things looking pretty good. Energies and metals and mining are looking dubious at best. As you can see, energy's big slide, kind of pulling back a little bit. Looks like they're trying to resume their slide. Metals and mining have been in a bit of a slide as of late, but gold has been a little stronger coming back in recently, but for the most part, working its way higher in kind of a choppy fashion. Silver, same sort of action too, but has gotten beat up a little bit more lately uh, relative to gold, but trying to rally out of this kind of wide and loose and choppy pullback. A lot of areas recently banging out new highs, drugs, which were sort of left for dead, flying right back up towards that prior highs in here. I sure would like to see them bang out new highs sooner rather than later. Ditto for biotech. Biotech was having a pretty deep pullback, looking a little questionable. But now it's right around all-time high, so that's certainly a good thing. Health services has come flying out of its pullback, stalling out a little bit today. And what else? Most sectors looking pretty good in here. Uh, obviously, we need to take a look at Apple. Uh, there's computer software, brand new highs we close up here. No big shocker. Apple or computer hardware. Let's take a look at Apple. It's going to look just like this because Apple is so big. So far, the trend remains in place. In Apple, it wasn't really a big enough washout move, but this would have been, if we zoom in a little bit, this would be an example of what an opening gap reversal looks like. Notice that it gaps lower here and then rallied up intraday. It just wasn't a big enough gap for me to get too excited about it. All right, yeah, keep the picks coming. Let's take a look at Tesla, T-S-L-A. Is Tesla TKO? I wouldn't call it a TKO. I mean, you would really have to have I mean, that's just ridiculous, okay? That's just amazing. That's that's the mother of all short squeezes there. Just because it's gone so far so fast, it would actually have to have a much deeper move, believe it or not, to be a TKO. But yeah, I mean, you could end up with the mother of all. You had like a little tiny gap here. If this thing were to gap way down here, that might've been worth it for an opening gap reversal type of play. I would imagine there's still some shorts on the hook, even though Nancy covered her shares. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just become, yeah, you kind of answer your own question. It's become super speculative. But yeah, it does look like, good point. It does look like Bitcoin looked like a few years ago. And I did trade and I, I bought Bitcoin at, I think my initial trades were down in the three and four thousands. But I remember placing a trade, I think it was at 16,500 or 18,500. And I'm thinking, this is the stupidest crazy trade and stupidest crazy trade town, you know? But yeah, it's it's actually gotten a little too crazy for even me, this Tesla that is. But I certainly hear you. I would actually, believe it or not, like to see more pullback on this. If this was a little biotech and we took a zero off of this and it ran from 40 to 90, it'd be like, well, it's got to pull back a little bit deeper, believe it or not. Okay. But yeah, for the most part, I think it might be better off just staying out of the way on Tesla. Unless, again, we have like the mother ball opening gap reversals or a much, much deeper pullback. But I think there's other stocks out there, like the QTT was or whatever, something at lower levels that could have a big opportunity and take off. Shorting CKH. All right, I'm not in a big shorting move at this particular point in time. Let's take a look at that. Well, with, with shorting, I prefer, like, let's take a look at that PAGS real quick, Stuart. I know, I know you're new to the methodology, so let me just show you a few things that I've probably showed before. So if I'm gonna short something, Here's the stock at all time highs, okay? Tug.to, okay? I'll pull it up for in a second. So here's the stock, makes a minor double top. It actually looks kind of like a double top knockout here, okay? Now remember, sometimes these trend resumption patterns can turn into bona fide reversals. And you can see we end up with the first thrust down followed by this retrace. And we shorted it somewhere in here, it meandered around and then it began to implode. The whole point I'm trying to make is if you're gonna short something, short something at higher levels, as opposed to something that's already at lower levels. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. 
And that's especially true when you're in a market at all time highs. Okay, so if we're in a longer term bear market, then yeah, you you trade the trend resumption type of patterns to the downside, just as you would trade them to the upside. But when you're in a rip roaring bull market like we're in now, then you only want to go after something at very high levels that's in the early phases of rolling over because it's going to be priced for perfection and the whole world is going to be long. I hate to say it, but Apple could be the mother of all shorts someday. And remember, on the long side, we're in some cases looking for things that are a little bit more different than we're looking at on the short side. I mean, sorry, on the short side. Let me rephrase. Fix my phone here. Sorry about that. Getting some sort of a trade alert or something. I don't know what's going on. I can't figure out where they're coming from or where they're going to. Anyway, you want to short stocks at high levels when the market's at high levels, especially. Okay, that's the whole point I'm trying to make. If we were to look at CKH, if let's say if put a gun there ahead, we had the short the shippers. Well, first thing I'm seeing here, look at the volume on this. Okay, that's your average volume is it's less than 90,000 shares a day. Let's try. Let's say you decide to short a thousand shares on this. Well, then you're one percent of the day's volume. Okay, it's only traded 23,000 shares so far today. This is something that you could get caught in a really, really, really bad squeeze. And that's why part of the reason I was talking about those fatter stocks, meaning those high cap, big cap stocks, is one, everybody in the is probably already in them and they're all rush for the door at the same time. When they begin to fall, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. They're priced for perfection, meaning that you have a bunch of analysts watching them, a bunch of people watching them. Everybody in the world's already long. If they have one small little hiccup, that's the end of the road for them. <laughs> Maybe it might be the end of the road for Tesla. Anybody own Tesla? My daughter's like Tesla crazy now. <laughs> I heard they're bad cars, but they're cool. I have to admit they're cool. I even kind of joked to my daughter, I'm gonna get one of those cyber trucks. And she's like, no, don't get that, don't get that. Anyway, if you felt like you had to trade a shipper, for some reason you want to short the shippers, let's see what we have in shippers. Let's sort them by volume. And let me show you, there's one in particular, I can't think of the name of it though, but we'll find it, that would probably be a better looking short let's see shippers themselves okay what's this dht that's kind of too cheap but something like dht you can see it came off of higher levels fro at least it's coming off a little higher levels okay let's see if we can find another one maybe nat no it's too cheap our old friend t and k is it that one just see something that like this at much higher levels would be a better short although it's no longer at higher levels it's going to break down Zach, why are you talking about motorcycles? Go ahead and take take the other half of your Adderall. <laughs> you know how bad, you know, I, I'm undiagnosed, but I know I have ADD. And if y'all start talking about motorcycles or God knows what, you, I can tell you right now, my ADD's, ADD, ugh, ADD is going to kick in. Yeah, I'd love to have a motorcycle, except I've seen too many people hurt. Plus, my wife won't let me. All right, let's fix this. All right, let's share the screen here okay let's get the screen shared so you say for you want to take a look at l-u-k l-u-g dot t-o okay l-u-g dot t-o there we go yeah that's a good looking stock let's see if we can fill the chart let's take a look and see how it looks longer term that's a gold stock okay yeah that looks pretty good you know what gold is like Anything commodity related, I like to catch them early in the process, like way back here when they're bottoming out. But I hear you. So let's zoom in a little bit on this. Let's look the last six months on this. So what do we have going on? Yeah, it's good looking stock. I'd like to see a little bit deeper pullback. Okay. So let's let's get a let's get a pin working, and then we're probably going to change colors on that. Yeah, it's had a pretty good run in here, and so we started off here, and obviously we ended up here. Okay. So the big blue arrow points higher. What I'm liking here is that kind of had a slow start and then it's beginning to accelerate higher. It also has nice, nice persistency. But for me, I would actually like to see a little bit more knockout move. So if it could pull back, let's say from here to here, then I might consider it. But yeah, a good eye on that one, Stuart. I'll give you a high five. High five. First high five of the day, but on a deeper pullback. Okay. Yeah, do not start that CKH. Not that I can give you direct trading advice but I personally would not do it. Steve wants to talk about IQ. Okay, IQ was in my Landry list recently, and I'll tell you why. I get a lot of questions about TKOs. That's a TKO right there. 
And then especially when you add in that bar, okay? By the way, look at that opening gap reversal. I wonder why I didn't pick up on that, okay? That's a, that's a nice little opening gap reversal within the setup, right? Oh, you know why? That was on the 27th. Shoot, there was a thousand of them like this out there. It was just, they were everywhere. And I did play some other ones. So kind of cupping handily down here. It's had a nice run from lows, double top knockout pattern. A little speculative, but hey, you know, we live for speculation, right? The only problem now with it is it's begun to rally out of its pullback, obviously. So what would have to happen is it would have to continue to break out to new highs. And then we look to place a pullback along the way. It's had to it had to clean these new highs decide, clear these new highs decisively. Now, if you're already long, congratulations, stay long for sure. Well, sure. You're welcome. And you're welcome. Mike Peterson is saying on day five IPOs, O N E M and R E Y N, they're both over 20. So do we consider them by D or is it $20 max price for that methodology? Okay. The 25, the, in my IPO course, I talked about the $20 max rule. As a general statement, IPOs that are that are priced a little bit lower, lower than $20, okay, tend to seem seem to do a little bit better, okay. But that's just a that's just a general rule, and those are for pioneer patterns. That's like early in the process or early in the trading. Now, what I have noticed is if you have plenty of momentum then the $20 rule isn't as important. And, but by momentum, what I'm doing is I'm using a five day SMA as part of the pattern. And I haven't, you gave me a name for that, Mike, and I forget the name, what you called it, but let's take a look at that. O N N E M. Okay. So I don't think it'll let me plot a five day moving average, but I think that I think that this might be worth a shot as an IPO. If we close here, we've got pretty good range. It's had about a seven point range to it. So I think I would I would be willing to, and again, take them on a case by case basis. I mean, we're in a rip roaring bull market. IPOs are just printing money right now for the most part. So I would say, yeah, that's a potential trade. And we've obviously been discussing this in the Facebook group, REYN. So today's close could be very interesting. Now, REYN, a little bit higher price. Notice that it came public above, well above $20 a share. Also, notice the range. It's only three points range. And I don't have the link. Stock charts has, has created a link. I wonder if I put it somewhere where you can actually go in and find out what they do. So can somebody figure out what these people do? Is this like aluminum foil or something? You know, so not enough range. I mean, that's what, 10%, just eyeballing that, okay? So I would toss out REYN. Doesn't mean that it might not be worth trading down the road on a secondary setup, a pullback or a TKO on things of that nature. But right now, I would pass on it just because you've only ran about 10%. Now that other one, O-N-E-M, a little bit different story. That's about a... What's that about? 50% run, and I think it looks pretty good. So any close, let's say 25 and a half or higher would be a buy on that one. So good eye on that, Mike. And hopefully that one came up in the. I put a few of them out a couple of days ago. H M N Y, H M N Y. Uh oh, Zach, what are you thinking? Did you fall asleep on your keyboard or something? H M N Y. No. <laughs> I think he's trying to. I think he's taking a harmony or something. H H N M Y. Nope. Well, obviously, if it's this one, then that's uh that's worthy of getting kicked out of the group. But I know you fat fingered something. So you have the actual symbol. One time I fat fingered just something. I started complaining. Started bitching. <laughs> Dave, you got the wrong symbol. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, any more while uh, Zach tries to figure out what he was punching in? No, I'm joking. It's the worst symbol I could find. <laughs> you you don't have to you don't have to mess with me. <laughs> Mike says, "Thanks, Dave. Almost a perfect session today, except for Zach going off its meds. Well, you know, it happens to all of us sometimes." 
All right, going once, going twice. As usual, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time on a busy schedule to be here. Everybody have a great weekend. Oh, by the way, no show next week. I am, I can't say what I'm doing, but I will not be doing a show next week. I don't say what I'm doing because I don't want people to come rob my house. Although I have a big, I have a guy named Bubba with a AK-47. That'll be Gordon House. He's actually got an AR-15, but anyway, I digress. All right, you're welcome. You're welcome, Steve. Everybody have a great weekend, and then I'll see you guys in two weeks. Thank you so much.